presented by Zales. And welcome to ESPN College Basketball. You're watching the ACC on ESPN on a wintry day in Indianapolis. We're downtown for a heck of a matchup between the ACC and the Big Ten interstate rivals, Purdue and Notre Dame, a couple of top 25 teams. Hi, everybody. Dave Fleming alongside Dick Vitale. We expect a really fun matchup. These are two legit good teams. Give me a key on both sides. Well, you know, you talk about first with Purdue, Purdue. They do a great job shooting the three. They do a phenomenal job there, and they rebound well. So Notre Dame's going to have to be concerned with their rebounding. On the other side with the fighting Irish, Dave, you look at a team that's number one in the nation making free throws, number one in the nation least number of turnovers, and number one in the nation assist to turnover ratio. But both clubs are searching for that magnificent, that unbelievable signature win that's escaped them so far this year. This is a game that will give them a quality W. Yeah, I think that's kind of a theme for the day on both sides, where each of these teams have played well, getting ready for conference season in both instances, but looking for that non-conference resume-boosting win. And one of these two will get it today in Indianapolis. A fun day of hoops. We've got Indiana and Butler, although you and I won't be calling that game to follow us. you got fans of all four teams here downtown, and Notre Dame's got the ball first. Tell you what, Notre Dame so efficient offensively. When you study what they do, they do a great job of distributing the basketball. Steve Vasturia, who's been their leading scorer, although it's a very balanced team, missed his first look. And now Purdue, you mentioned the three-point shooting. You think of their big guys, but they're shooting it so well from the outside. They really do. And then they have the combination with their big people on the interior that can score. They turn the ball over. The turnovers don't come from the perimeter players, come from their big players. And that is one big difference between these two teams. You mentioned how well Notre Dame protects the ball. Purdue does not do the same. And that's going to go as a turnover. That's an offensive foul. And though that turnover number has bothered their head coach this year. Yeah, he told us before the game, he said, we like to balance it out by out-rebounding them. He said, if we turn it over seven more times, but we get seven more opportunities off the glass, it balances it out. That turnover gets charged to Caleb Swanigan, who's so talented. But that's his 38th turnover of the year. This is their 11th game. So that's a lot for a big guy. Masturia sort of trapped in the corner there. God, it's got to get going for them. For Notre Dame is V.J. Beecham. Had a bad game against Villanova, and he's normally a very good shooter. And they almost beat the number one ranked team in the country anyway. How about that start for Beecham? Well, he's got to make that three. It was not available to him against Villanova. Both these teams have something in common. They both lost tough, hard-nosed games to Villanova. Yeah, the Villanova's two closest contests on the year, Dakota Mathias into the corner to P.J. Thompson, who's not much of a score. Swanigan will shoot from the outside, and he will make it from outside. Yeah, he can make the three. He's a very versatile offensive player. Lost a lot of weight since his arrival at Purdue. Yeah, you go back to when he was an eighth, ninth grader, when he was already a prospect. I mean, he has totally changed his physique. You know, he broke the hearts of the people at Michigan State. He committed there originally. Colson, who's been such a good all-around player. Bonzi Colson, I find him fascinating. Not big in stature, but he plays so big. Well, his dad was a heck of a player at Rhode Island. Bonzi, good rebounder. Did not have a strong game against Villanova, and that's really a credit to Villanova. He blocks Swanigan's shot down low. Nice defensive play right there by Colson on the interior. Good spacing by Notre Dame. Farrell shoots the three way off. Matt Farrell has been one of the most improved players in the country. A rare errant pass, but tracked down by Basturia. They don't turn it over eight times a game. When you're getting shots with each possession, you got a chance to win, especially when you got people that can make shots. Farrell missed it. The follow by Colson's good. Colson on the offensive glass, good rebound. Farrell, by the way, you don't want to put him on a free throw line. He has not missed a free throw yet this year. Not 24. one of them. Yep, 24 for 24. Notre Dame is not only the best free throw shooting team in the country, they could set an all-time record for team free throw shooting. That's how good they've been. And that's another Purdue turnover. Haas with a walk. There's the Irish head coach, Mike Bray. 17 years now as their head coach. Back-to-back -back Elite Eights. Program is so healthy right now. You know, he's done a phenomenal job. He fits the puzzle of Notre Dame to perfection. You could say that about Matt Painter. Came back home, played for Gene Cady. Remember the great years that Gene Cady had at Purdue. Beecham, a runner with the left hand, and that one's good. Tell you one thing, it looks like he's focused today. 
they could have used one or two shots from him against Villanova. No, but Villanova against Purdue, they went 10 for 10 on the free throw line late in the game, and against Notre Dame, they went 20 for 22. So the free throw line helped the Wildcats in those two matchups. Haas, when you let him get that close in, he's not going to miss many of those. The carom to Thompson, who missed a good look. Another offensive rebound. That one too strong. Purdue having a little tough time finding the net. Thompson, great distributor, facilitated with the basketball. He's the all-time leader at Purdue in terms of assist to turnovers. A near turnover. Vastoria in the corner. Nicholson will shoot the jumper. Tip up, no good. There's Haas. Both these clubs well coached. They'll play hard. They'll play with a lot of intensity. Thompson all the way. He's not normally a scorer, Dave. He's the kind of guy that's going to distribute the basketball. Any scoring they get out of him is really a big positive. And he, you see those numbers, 15 assists, two turnovers the last three games. He's a guy who, like so many of the Irish players, protects the ball. Astoria, he's been more aggressive looking to score in his senior year. Bad pass from Colson. See, that's not normally a turnover you'll see out of Notre Dame. And nice Carson pass. Edwards to Swanigan. Swanigan gets the deuce. Well, what a nice look right there. Great pass. All right, Carson Edwards is just a freshman. He's going to be a really good player for Purdue. Well, he gives him some of that athleticism we see right there. He steals Very it quick. away. Going all the way for a bucket. Nice little play right there. They were lacking some speed and quickness, and he provides it. And they'll get a lot of play off the bench from the former starter, averaged 12 a game last year, Edwards. Yeah, so they've swapped one Edwards for another. They've put the veteran Edwards on the bench to give him that punch. I like what you asked him. How did he handle it? And Matt Painter said, okay, not thrilled about it, but he's played better coming off the bench. Good lead pass. And Matthias from the baseline. Haas missed the follow. Finally a rebound for the Irish. Trying to get more minutes out of Haas this year. Last year had a share of time with Hammonds, who's now in the NBA with the Mavericks. What a great look from Farrell to Colson. Farrell has really improved. He has really elevated his game this year. He has stepped in and done a solid job. Don't you think he's one of the most improved players in the country? Yeah, when you look at his numbers and look what he's doing, you'd have to say that. From 13 minutes a game to right around 30 minutes a game, so he's taken a huge chunk of the playing time. That's a whistle and a foul that will send us to a timeout. So up and down action early. Notre Dame with a two-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zales. Celebrate your lasting love with gifts from Zales, the Diamond Store, and Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Well, we like our non-conference game here this afternoon. That's a pretty good one coming up this week, Kentucky-Louisville. Well, you talk about Hall of Fame coaches. You talk about Mr. Calipari, Mr. Patino. You talk about their guards when you look at Monk and Fox. In fact, the kid, Carson Edwards, played with Fox in AAU basketball out in Texas. And I'll tell you one thing about the kid, Edwards. He was 38-1 in high school. Unbelievable. He's a winner. He's a really a different kind of player that Matt Payne has been able to recruit. Scorer, slasher, driver, athletic. About a month into his college career, he's forced his way into the starting lineup from Atascacy to Texas, right outside of Houston. Rebound for the Irish. See, I think Purdue's got to take advantage of their size on the interior, and thus far they have not been able to. Yeah, get some touches inside. Austin Torres, who doesn't play a ton of minutes, set a screen for Farrell. He went right to the bucket. Nice little drive by Farrell. Farrell was really a non-offensive factor last year. Gave him some minutes off the bench, but he has become such a productive player. Yeah, look at that jump in scoring. Demetrius Jackson not at Notre Dame anymore. With the Celtics. That pass tipped and stolen. There's turnover city, and that's a big concern of Matt Painter. Beecham, the trailer in transition, not that time. Swanigan almost fell out of bounds. You know, Beecham shot two years ago really well from the three. Last year went down a notch. This year's got it back a little other than the Villanova game. Matthias is a guy who's really been shooting the three, and there's Vincent Edwards. He's a kid that lost his starting job. You know, they said he wasn't really thrilled about it. You know, I like that in a player. Why should he be thrilled? He's been starting all the time. He wants to start. That's a good attitude to have. Right. But now he's got to really earn the playing time and coming in and doing things that are productive. Yeah, that's two different things, right? I mean, that's, that's a good point because he's not happy about it, but you see him grab a rebound. He's played better since coming off the bench. He's a very versatile player. That freshman Edwards trailing. That's a foul against Swanigan. 
Shot that ball too quickly. That's not a normal Purdue sequence right there. That'll be the second foul against Caleb Swanigan. That will send him to the bench. Now they do bring Isaac Haas. How many teams can take Swanigan out and bring a guy like Haas awesome. in? You know, they get a lot of touches on the inside. That was a concern, Matt Painter. So we throw the ball in the post more than anyone else. So therefore, our post guys are getting really situations where they're going to maybe turn the ball over. You know, they play those two big guys together a lot. But when, when just one of them is on the floor, I think in some ways they're, I mean, they're a very different team. But they still play at a high level. Notre Dame decided to play head-to-head -head on the post. Here's Notre Dame trying to execute offensively. Colson working his way closer, missed the shot. See, Mike Bray doesn't want to double up on the post because he thinks they got too many good shooters. Edwards finds Haas, who got fouled. Well, Isaac Haas is going to the free throw line. First, just make sure he's okay. I think he maybe got poked in the eye. Take a look at Haas right here on the inside. He's going to get contact real hard right there. Got smacked in the face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not poked in the eye, punched in the face, sort of. He and Hammonds were very effective when you look at the minutes and their productivity between both in the post last year. It's going to be a good, oh, he got a shot right there. Twice. He's going to be really a solid player on the inside. And Purdue's going to be one of the contenders in the Big Ten. You think about the Big Ten, you certainly got to think of the team playing next after this game, Indiana. Really a good basketball team. Yeah, maybe the two best wins combined of any program in the country so far. They got the high-quality wins. Indiana, Wisconsin's a really good team. Very good. And never get on Michigan State. They get the kid Bridges back. Time is all find a way to win basketball games. They will get better. Michigan State will as the year goes on. Well, good news for Indiana. They got to get Ananobi back, and he played so well. I did the Carolina game against Indiana, and Indiana, that field house was as live as we've ever, ever heard it. I mean, Obi and I, Dave O'Brien, we couldn't believe that place. It was electric. I don't know if anybody was going to come in there and win against Indiana that night. It was reminiscent of the time I did a game with Dan Schumann here when they beat Kentucky, who was undefeated. By the way, they should play Kentucky. They both should play. That's up to Tom Green, and that's up to John Calabar. Set your Eagles aside and play that game. They should do it, just like this day is so good for basketball in this state. You get the... The doubleheader with all the fans here at the NBA arena. Farrell up top. That's the freshman Gibbs who hits the three. Talented kid. Comes from a good family. I played basketball really well. Another played at Pittsburgh. Had another brother play at Seton Hall. Now Sterling who got some NBA time as well. From the baseline, Haas. Rebound, Notre Dame. Gibbs from out of New Jersey out of Seton Hall prep. Beecham, good shot fake. And then steps into one from the lane and just came up short. Got a little tough shot right there. Didn't elevate enough to get the ball up. Didn't get any arc on it. Matthias. There's the freshman, Edwards. No good. Too much of a line drive. They got to give Matthias some shots. He can climb the guys that have been shooting like 15, 60% from the three. Matthias, 56% from three on the year. Farrell draws a foul. And he'll go to the free throw line when we come back to Indianapolis, a place where my partner spent a lot of time with the Pacers. We might talk about that when we come back. Well, they call this building here in downtown Banker's Life Fieldhouse. It's really a beautiful arena, maybe my favorite in the NBA. It's the home of the Pacers. Market Square Arena was the old home of the Pacers, just a couple blocks away. And I did not know this, Dick, that you spent a lot of time <laughs> inside. You were a broadcaster for the Pacers. Yeah, I did some of their games years and years ago. The Rifleman, Chuck Person, now at Auburn with Bruce Pearl, who, by the way, Santa Claus came early for him. He just got a kid who's going to be eligible immediately now. A five-star player rated very high by ESPNU. Give it to him, Wiley. And he's going to play a big guy. So that's a big gift. Santa Claus arrived. Here comes Santa. Here comes Santa. <laughs> My wife and I just hosted a party for 300 kids at the Sarasota Boys and Girls Club. And I was, like, running around like a 10-year-old. I was having so much fun. You're kind of Santa Claus all year round. I try to be. <laughs> now that's a good thing. There's a three, top of the circle, no good. So far, Purdue, which has been shooting the ball so well from the outside, not finding the mark. How about the trailer, Gebbin? Gebbin was the trail guy. That's perfect execution. Mike Bray does a tremendous job teaching. He told me, we stress in practice, the ball is gold. 
the ball is gold. Because I asked them, what are you doing each year, it seems? There's so many they're down in turnovers. He said, we work on that and practice on a regular basis. Because it is interesting. Every team talks about it. Notre Dame actually lives it. Haas is getting some good looks, and those shots are not going down. A screen nice and roll. Play. And another one to Gebbin. This nice. time to the free throw line. Nice look by Farrell. Did a tremendous job. Now watch. Now that's just good fast break execution by Notre Dame. And a quick timeout. We'll step aside and be right back after this. Excellent transition. To see the missed free throw from Martinez Gibbon. And that's very rare for Notre Dame. They're number one in the country in the line. Number they one. They didn't get to the line that often against Villanova, but they did against Iowa. They did against Colorado. Look at that as a team. If, if, if an individual shoots 86% from the line, we call him a really good free throw shooter. That's what they shoot as a team. Unbelievable. That's a big asset. You got guys that can make free throws, especially in close games. That's a difference maker. Yeah, you think against their best opponents in conference play in the NCAA tournament, those made free throws are going to help Notre Dame. Well, you know, Notre Dame, you mentioned it earlier, Mike Bray to go to the Elite Eight two consecutive years. Got beat by Kentucky one year. Nice entry right there. Haas is not going to miss that one. Well, he had a great angle. It was perfect. 45-degree angle. Had the good low post position. Let's see if Purdue can do a little more of that. Farrell finds the shooter right side in and out. And now Purdue, they will run. Klein, who shoots almost all threes, gave it up. Underneath the basket, the shot rejected by Colson. Terrific job defensively by Notre Dame in defensive transition. Because I thought they had a layup down there, Dave. I did, too. Beecham, Colson, they all got back. You know, my brain was telling us his kids, great basketball IQs. They understand how to play. Farrell got it high up off the glass. Hey, he has really become a solid offensive player at that point guard slot. I mean, he doesn't have the athleticism and the ability that Demetri Jackson had, but he gets the most out of his talent. Haas missed the hook. Smotherman had it, lost it, got it back, and missed the layup. Sticks with it, though, and puts it in. Well, he gives him a little athleticism. Sat out last year. And Purdue, 6 of 22 from the field. A lot of good looks. And still only down by 6. Offensive it's rebounds a part of it. You see that number. That, Matt Painter talked to us about that. Colson jumper no good. If we're going to turn it over, we got to at least get the offensive rebounds. Exactly. We've got to balance it out. Steal some possessions. Look at the difference right They're going to get it to Haas inside. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Got to. Got to bring it inside to the post guy. And he gets fouled. Some big dudes will be on the football field. Bowl season is here. Appalachian State Toledo. That's the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl at 530 on ESPN. And then down in New Orleans, the RNL Carriers. New Orleans Bowl, Southern Miss, Louisiana Lafayette at 9 on ESPN. Swanigan coming back on the floor with those two fouls. I'm going to be a good guy here because it's Christmas spirit. I'm not going to really say what I want to say about I think there's too many bowl games, too many <laughs> mediocre teams. I promise I will not say that. There's too much mediocrity that's rewarded. I mean, reward teams that do well. I mean, six and six, come on now, give me a break. I have a few bowls they can play in. I'm not going to mention where. <laughs> Gibbon down low. Nice play by Gibbon on the inside. He gives him a physical presence. Some post presence inside. Last year they had Zach August on the interior. Yeah, that's really their biggest question. There's Swanigan with the two fouls. Interesting decision by Matt Painter to have him back in the game. Well, I think it's a good decision. I think too many coaches they get too afraid of that. You sit him on a bench, and before you know it, you're down 12 14. Yeah, well, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? He commits another foul, and then he's on the bench. You're keeping him on the bench if you don't give a player any chance to get back in. You know, Dave, that's another thing I really think has to change. I think we got to go to six fouls for disqualification. Too many stars are on the bench too early. Astoria kept his balance, didn't travel. Farrell off the dribble, hits a three. He's looking for his shot. Farrell with a nice little jump shot. See, the court sizes have not changed. 94 by 50, but the players have changed. They're quicker, they're bigger, they're stronger, they're more physical. So here we get a guy, two fouls quickly, sitting next to the coach. The only sport where you're penalized like that. Let's keep our best players on the floor. People That's, pay to see them play. That seems like a good concept. Vincent Edwards, nice aggressive move. And he draws a foul. 
So back to the free throw line for Purdue, but they trail by nine. Wow. I tell you one thing, you better stop them getting that late. It's unreal the way they're getting in here. You got to stay between your guy and the basket. They're not doing that, Purdue. They're not playing square up. They're getting beat off the bounce. Hopefully that's a good enough answer for Coach Greenberg back Coach. in studio. See, well, Coach Greenberg, the reason he's coaching right now in yeah. the studio? Yeah. Because his guys didn't stop the guy from getting <laughs> in the lane. See, all of us, we go, I got fired. We all get fired. We go to ESPN. Uh, it's a tough, <laughs> tough business. I love that. On the sideline. They do. I mean, you watch them play offense, and here it is again. They space the floor. They move without the ball. Monzi Colson flipped one in. I mean, that's a little Hail Mary time. They got the rosary beads out right down there in South Bend. They're at the grotto. They're praying at the grotto. I see Digger down there on his knees. Digger Phelps. What a job he did at the Fighting Irish. I don't think he's ever appreciated the amazing job he did when he coached at Notre Dame. Yeah, not just the win against UCLA that oh, snapped the winning me? streak. It wasn't just that. 78, they went to the Final Four, got beat by a team down there named Duke. Also, Kentucky was there, won the championship with Joby Hall in Arkansas. Eddie Sutton was there. Rex Fluger, the pull-up with the soft touch, the kid from Southern California. Great stat on him. Rex Fluger played a modern day, a great high school out on the West Coast. Let me tell you this, he has not had a turnover yet this year. Not one. Not one turnover. Miles Simon would be proud, another modern day guy. They've yeah. had many, many, many. Great players there. Boy, Miles was a heck of a player when he played in Arizona. How about the Wildcats, the game before us, surviving. That game got crazy in the end. They were up huge against Texas A&M. Found a way to get the job done. Texas A&M, a good basketball team. Marking them has really, really come along for Arizona. He's one of the better type of dandies. Yeah, Lowry Martin, it's a year for freshmen. There are so many good freshmen, and he's one of them. He belongs on that list as one of the best. Matthias, they've kept him off the three-point line. They'd much rather him shoot that shot. They're doing a great job, Notre Dame, not giving him the looks on the three. Taking the three ball away from Purdue. What a good look from Farrell down low, and then Beecham just missed it. They're so efficient, the way they share the basketball. And Beecham didn't really get back on defense. I think that's going to make Mike Bray unhappy. Yeah, he didn't get back quickly. Nice little entry on the inside by Purdue. Yeah, well, it was good play by Purdue, but you miss a layup on one end, you better hustle back on the other. Defensive transition so much, you got to reduce the number of advantages teams get. Swan again with those two fouls, doesn't want to commit number three. Took advantage, went right to the basket, close it. Strong That's, drive to the goal. It's good offense, right? A guy's yeah, in foul absolutely. trouble, go at him. Yeah, absolutely, so what's talking about. They're getting in the lane too easily. One dribble, Matthias, too strong. Rebound, Colson, who's everywhere. And I'll tell you one thing, Notre Dame's done. They were concerned about rebounding, but they're doing a good job rebounding. Vastoria for three. Timeout, Purdue. You know, Vastoria knocks down the three, but it was the penetration, the distribution of the basketball by Farrell. Facilitator. He is one of the most improved players I've seen. You're right, Dave. He is so improved. Watch Farrell right now. He's going to penetrate. He spots. He knows where his teammate is. He's at the three-point line, and he can shoot the three. Nothing but nylon. NBN. Fighting Irish. They love it. And there's Colson going to the goal. No Swannigan has two. That's the basketball IQ that Mike was telling you and I about before the game. He said, we recruit kids that have a good I said, how do they execute so well? They seem to know what a good shot is. He said, we try to recruit kids that really have a good feel and understanding of the game. And it, you know, sometimes it doesn't result in you know Notre Dame sitting at the top of the recruiting rankings getting all the five-star kids they haven't had a ton of those in South Bend and yet they keep winning games they're winning games they went to the Elite Eight, Elite Eight, Elite Eight two years in a row I mean last year along that way they beat teams like Wisconsin they beat Michigan I mean just a terrific job they do I, 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 I think they have a team that can get back this year Swanigan down low Swanigan that's where they're gonna bring him gotta take advantage on the inside He's got nine, Purdue's down ten. Notre Dame's actually played really well here in this first half, getting good shots. And I really attribute that to the play of Farrell at the point guard slot. That's an offensive foul. Well, Kentucky-Louisville, Wednesday night on ESPN. It is one of the great 
rivalries, non-conference style in college hoops. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Anytime you put together Louisville and Kentucky, you got passionate fans. You know it's going to be exciting. You got blue chip players. I mean, there's a blue blood programs, no doubt. And what coaches? I mean, Calipari and Patino, they're so lucky in that area that they have two guys of that level coaching in their state. Yeah, it's amazing. And Kentucky with all that talent. How about UCLA going on the road to Rupp and taking it to Kentucky? Well, they're going to those young kids now. T.J. Leaf and Lonzo Ball have changed. You know, we were talking about this to Mike earlier. Schools like Notre Dame, you look at football, Notre Dame, had a down year. They can get healthy quickly. Just have to look at UCLA. Last year, they had petitions. They were screaming for Steve Alford's head. Fire him. He's got to go. Oh, really? Take a look where they are now. They're one of the top teams in the nation. And Notre Dame in football could turn it around quickly, and I firmly believe they will. The airplane banners flying up above Pauley Pavilion. Fire Coach Alford. All that stuff was yeah. last year. They're not firing him now, baby. Oh, no. They better think about extending his contract somehow <laughs> because he's got the number two recruiting class in the country coming in next year. Well, Coach Alford, who is still such a presence in this state for all that he did for Indiana basketball. Farrell hits a three. Wow, what an absolute performance. Nothing sensational. You're not seeing any... Dipsy doos, slam jam bams. You're seeing solid fundamental basketball. Read screens, get open. See a gap in the defense, attack off the bounce. He's a cerebral, solid point guard. How about his first half? He's got 12 points, six assists. Haas down low. Haas got to give him that point production in that lane. And they're going to find and get him deep in the inside. Hey, man, this is like a tournament flavor here. It really is. Two really good teams, I think. Two quality basketball teams understand how to play. And you said it well. You don't see a lot of the five-star McDonald's All-Americans, just kids that understand how to play. Beecham along the baseline, cut off. That's a three for Ryan off the bench. He comes off the bench. He's in a good shoot. He's been turning the ball over a little too much for that. But he can shoot the basketball as well. That's what you want from your bench. Come in, give us some production. Notre Dame, six of ten for three. Ryan on the year shooting almost 50%. Look at that three-point shooting difference in this game. Purdue's only made one of them. Nice up and under, but he traveled. He's got some nice moves down in the post. We're going to take a look right here, baby. Trifecta time coming up. Mr. Farrell steps back. Bingo! Nothing but nylon. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mason. Look forward to that at halftime. Well, I agree with Seth right there. Don't turn it over. What about this? Three turnovers in the first half. Three. Eight for the year they average. Eight. Best in the nation. I mean, you come into the game saying, we're going to force them to make some mistakes. We're going to try it, and they just don't do it. They need the nation assist turnover ratio. They love playing with each other. Look for the open shot like right there. Look at the spacing. Penetration created that. The difference maker thus far in the first half has been fouled. Not only is 12 points but his ability to find open people to create plays. Another assist there. Lead is 15, and a near steal. It goes off of Beecham out of bounds. What a terrific first half. Terrific first half. But remember this, they had a big lead on Villanova, too, and Villanova came back. Number one in the country in free throw percentage, number one in fewest turnovers, number one assist to turnover ratio. Number that's one. A, well, that's a key formula for success, for winning. I mean, you do those things, you got a great chance to go to the winner's circle. And, they, you know, look, we, we, we talk about them needing a signature non-conference win before ACC play starts. I think that's still true. But they haven't played a cream puff schedule. They've played some good teams. Well, beat Northwestern, beat Colorado, <coughs> beat Iowa. Haas spins, got a shot up, no good. Well, he got a shot up, but then it was not a good shot. He was off balance. Their defense, Notre Dame, made... It really took a tough shot there. Farrell tried to go right by him, got shoved. Matt that, Farrell's been everywhere. You know, he doesn't beat him with blinding speed, but he knows how to change speeds, and he knows how to recognize openings. That's two fouls against Isaac Haas. So both the big men for Purdue have two. Under two minutes to go, first half. Biggest lead for the Irish, who have the ball underneath the basket. You know what I remember last year? Stephen F. Austin gave Pfluger with the tip in a the end of the game for that big win <laughs> amazing win got him into that matchup in the sweet 16 with uh 
That was Wisconsin, right? Yep, then they, then they lost beat, to North Carolina. Beat Wisconsin, lost to North Carolina. Who, by the way, plays Kentucky today. See, That's for them, it. they got to get Barry back. Gebbin gets fouled. Otherwise, that would have been another assist for Farrell. I wish they found a way to credit point guards. You make a pass like that, the guy goes to the free throw line, you should get some credit for credit it. For it. I'll tell you one thing. We talked about rankings earlier. You talked about cupcakes. So many teams load up on cupcakes. My belief is we should not start ranking teams in terms of polls until conference play starts. I really believe that. I think conference play should be the area where now there's no more hiding. Now you find out who's good, who's not really good. Well, I, one thing that makes me happy, these teams here in Indiana are doing it today with what they call the Crossroads Classic. We see Kentucky-Louisville going to play this week. Uh, you mentioned how you want Kentucky and Indiana to start playing. Oh, they should play. Uh, th th these teams should play for the good of the game, the fans, the sport. Those matchups need to happen before conference play and starts. And the players love them rather love than them. beating people by 30 and 40 and 50. Down low, Swanigan got great position and scores. Nice little pass by Edwards, though, getting the ball in deep. Swanigan's really improved offensively. Last year, he tested the NBA and realized, hey, after an evaluation, I got to go back to school. He's in better shape. He's playing at an even higher level. He was one of those five-star big-time recruits. You were talking about how he originally committed to Michigan State. Farrell found the shooter in the corner. Beecham passed up the oh. three to dunk it down. No one rotating over. See, I don't think Matt Painter can be happy with their defensive performance here in the first half. First, look at the number they're giving up. They're giving up 50 points already in the half. I mean, that's a lot of points. And a lot of it's because of penetration. You got to gut it out. Edwards up. just launched a three and hit it. He's got to give him point production. He's too talented. He's a multi-talented, versatile player. There is still a difference, game clock and shot clock. And Notre Dame's going to use a timeout here to talk over this possession. I'll tell you one thing, Purdue had such tremendous tradition. Think of those Gene Cady years. Unbelievable. Well, you know, I, I, I called you Santa Claus all throughout the year, and part of it is your tireless work for the V Foundation. Our friend John Saunders, who's not with us any longer, and you just continue to work your tail off to try to raise as much money as you can. I give well, you credit for you it. You want to give back because so many people have been so good to me in my career and my life. I mean, I, I can't thank enough people who've really allowed me to live a life that's exceeded any dream. So you want to give back. The John Saunders research grant that we just showed there, I shared it with his wife yesterday. I can't believe this. I want to say thank you to all of you. We're at $533,000. Wow. I challenged my buddy Mike Tarico. I said, Mike, I'll throw in $50,000 to the fund. If you throw fifty, dollars Mike says, you got it. $50,000. All right. And then we got $100,000 from Northwestern Mutual. We got $100,000 from John Skipper and the ESPN people. And we're going to do a tribute to John at my gala. We we're also honoring Chris Berman. We're honoring Bob Huggins and Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly of Notre Dame does a phenomenal job helping raise dollars for cancer. His wife is a cancer survivor. And we'll sell that out again, and I can't wait. Well, and since we're talking cancer, I want to simply say this. My heart and sympathy just goes out to Greg Sager's family as we see a dunk and a layup on the inside. Greg Sager, there'll never, ever be another one like him. Unique, one of a kind. He will be missed by so many people. That's a foul against the Irish. We'll keep it up. It's the time of year where we talk about doing the right thing and generosity and helping people who need help. Well, I, I think of Craig Sager, what made him so unique, his personality, he was friendly to everyone, whether it be the star player, whether it be the fan, and just will be missed terribly. I know we think about broadcasters now, Craig, John Saunders, Stuart Scott. It just breaks my heart to think they're gone so young and such good, good people. I also want to send a sympathy out to, there was an incredible story in USA Today by Scott Gleason about two brothers and their brotherly love for one another, twins, Shane and Sean Green. Well, I got a message from, it just broke my heart because I know how much he loved his brother. But Shane told me that Sean passed and I want to send my sympathy out to the Greens and what an inspiration that 
family has been, and that story was so touching. You can get it at USA Today. Final few seconds, horn sounds. Farrell missed the shot. That's about all he missed in that first half. What a half for the Irish against 15th-ranked Purdue, V.J. Beecham, and the high-flying Notre Dame offense. Did a great job executing the entire first half. Shared the basketball, explosive to the goal. They just have really done a phenomenal job sharing. Andy and Seth in studio. Take it away, guys. Ian's Holiday Hoops, presented by Zales. Well, we're getting ready to start the second half in downtown Indianapolis. 52-38, the Irish with the 14-point halftime lead. Dave Fleming, Dick Vitale, back with you. What a performance from Notre Dame's offense. Outside shooting was part of it, but despite the size mismatch, they took it on the inside as well. Well, they did a great job bringing the ball into Colson, who was strong in that first half. On the other side, Purdue shot so poorly. They shot 40%, Notre Dame 60%. We're going to watch Coastal a little one-on-one here against Swanigan. Takes the ball to the goal, goes up real strong. Here he is again. Doesn't look pretty, not smooth, but it goes in, baby, and that's all that counts. That's all Mike Bray likes. Here's Swanigan, a little drop step inside. Nice pump fake, goes up strong, scores. He's not been the problem scoring on the inside. The problem's been they haven't made perimeter shots. Came in, big reputation, shooting threes. They're two for seven credit that to Notre Dame and the difference maker was the young point guard Farrell. He distributed the ball, he made shots, played really well, had 12 points but it was only the, not only the 12 points was his leadership at the point guard slot. Still a long way to go. One little tweak, Vincent Edwards is starting the second half on the court for Purdue. Did not start the game. The freshman Edwards from Vincent hits a three. I tell you, I don't think this baby's over. Purdue's too good they're much better than what we saw in that first half. But if they're going to make a little run, they're going to do it defensively. They were a non-show defensively in that first half. I guarantee you that was the topic of discussion at halftime. Well, you got to play a little pride now. Purdue's got such a rich tradition. Farrell somehow saved it, but back the court. foot was That's in the back court. court. Good, Good call. call right there. Good call. Ryan Dorsey on that call. Excellent call. Right on top of it. Yes, sir. Bill goes back and over. See, right now, they could, they got to get Edwards involved. He is really a talented offensive player. Had nine points coming off the bench. Lost the starting role, averages 12. Yeah, that's, a, that's today, and that's going forward. Vincent Edwards has to be a big part of what Purdue does. Matthias down low, Swanigan, no Isaac Haas on the court to start the second half. Trying to take him one-on-one. -on -one. And he does miss the shot, though. Did everything right but except score. That nice little look away drop steps. Farrell, a little hesitation, and then the left hand. And that's what I talked about earlier. He doesn't have blinding speed, but he changes speed so well. 14 points for him. The freshman Edwards missed the layup. It's out of bounds, though, off of Notre Dame. Take the look right here. Let's just change speed. See how he changes speeds right there? He sees an opening. He recognizes gaps and seams and attacks them real quickly. Use the left hand. Matthias dribbles into it too, hits it. They need Matthias to make shots. Shooting close to 60% from the three. He was a non-factor in that first half. They had just two points in the first half. So Purdue starting to try to chip away. They're playing a little bit harder defensively. Now, if it's going to be good enough because Notre Dame just gets great spacing. They move the ball well. And they get these veteran players. They're like a mid-major. These kids stay in school. they got great rhythm. story is one of them. Missed a long three. Yeah, that's kind of the, the normal progression for Notre Dame's program. Go from a role player to a star by the time you're an upperclassman. Well, that's their basketball culture that they have. Nice look from Edwards. And Thompson hits a three. You're right, they're playing harder, they're playing better. They got to make the three ball. The three ball is a vital part of their arsenal. Well, you, you think of the big guys with Purdue, but the three-point shot has been key for their offense. That's a travel. You don't see that out of Notre Dame that often. They better lace them up right now, Mike Brace Club, because Purdue has come out here with some fire here in the second half. To counter this lineup, Mike Bray goes a little smaller. Fluger comes in. Gebbin goes out. So that's interesting. He goes for a little bit more ball handling. 
Carson Edwards, the freshman from Texas. He can do that a little bit too because now Haas is not on the floor, just playing one big Swanigan. Swanigan going right at the defense. They're executing. They're much more efficient here. In the first three minutes, halftime, edge to Purdue. And it was a must for that. And it's got the crowd. The Boiler fans are getting a little live now. I'm getting a little alive. You're getting a little alive. The game's getting a little alive. You were on it. This game was a long way from being over. Colson had it stripped away. I said that to you at halftime. You did. And I believe you. The trailer, Matthias, three. No good. Vincent Edwards, nice offensive rebound. Vincent Edwards has given them a major, major lift. My Braves club needs a timeout, baby. They need a little T.O., baby. They need a T.O. The boilers are boiling right now. That they were freezing fast. in the first half, <laughs> but they're boiling now. A 14-point lead is down to four in the blink of an eye. I think we're going to see Urban Meyer and Saban in a championship game. Uh, those are the two best right now. And that would be a fun matchup going head-to-head. -head. Both guys talk about intensity and knowing how to get people to play. Tremendous. Purdue's had incredible intensity these first three minutes of the second half, and they have cut the lead by 10. Colson down low with a foul. Is that the third now on Swanigan? It was, is. That's number three on Swanigan. He did a great job. He knows Swanigan has two, right? So he's got to go with Haas now. He's got to get Swanigan out of the lineup. He knows he's got two, so he's going to challenge it. That's just good basketball IQ by Bonzi Colson. Veteran player. They really believe in those guys. Playing three, four years. Mike said he really likes the temperament of his team. They're not any up and down, they're consistent, every day in practice. He said they got a lot of pride in themselves. They come out, they work. That was a big play. That was. I was just about to say that. He's got 13, and that felt like a big bucket for the Irish. Now underneath, the freshman Edwards stuck with it. What a better job by Purdue executing here in the second half. Now remember now, Swenning's got three fouls. I would challenge him. I would go right now at him. He's playing Gavin, who's not really an offensive threat, but I still would get him a handle inside. Go right at him. Go right at him. Well, he kind of faded away into that hook shot. Go right to the basket. He's going to back away from you. Edwards used a Swanigan screen and hits a three. How good has he been here? How good has he been? He's saying, hey, Coach Pena, I don't belong on the bench, baby. I'm not all pine. I should be playing. But that's how you earn playing time, by being productive. Get better. And that's what he's done. He's got 14. The lead is down to two. Farrell pull up. Gevin rebound finds Farrell. Second opportunity to come. What a pass. Colson. I mean, Colson gets the layup. But that's created by the ability of Farrell spotting an opening, beating the defensive player, and dropping the dime. 14 points, eight assists already for Farrell. Notre Dame almost like a zone look here. Yeah, they got that little look of the zone right now. And they attacked it inside, Purdue did. Swinigan uses his body really well. Seals defenses off. Knows how to square his shoulders to the baseline. That whistle and a foul. Matt Painter did not like that call. Sends us to a timeout here in Indy. I tell you, this was a big trifecta. <laughs> Mr. Edwards came off the bench. He used the screen, steps back, and he drills it, baby. Nothing but nylon, MBN. And look at penetration. Dump inside, and Colson finishes off. Farrell creating it. Game, Dave Fleming, Dick Vitale here in Indianapolis. Notre Dame and Purdue, two top 25 teams. A two-point lead for the Irish. They were up 14 at halftime. I'll tell you one thing, did a great job here in the second half. Their execution's been phenomenal. And the play of Swanigan and also of Edwards. Edwards has been a star coming off the bench. Their biggest lead, Notre Dame, 17 in this game. Now, remember last weekend on the road against number one Villanova, they led by 11 in the first half, ended up losing that game. Throwing up a pretty good down the stretch. So they have a great mindset. The end of games, they know how to finish. Yeah, Colson, another bucket for him. It does help when you got a go-to guy, Josh Hart. Well, they got a couple probably Villanova does. but Well, I think Josh Hart's going to be a player of the year right up there. One of the top three choices. I don't know, any doubt about it. 
he's not going to go away. He's going to get better and better. Haas in. Swanigan with the three fouls is on the bench for the moment, and Notre Dame committed a foul. You know, that's no accident what just happened in previous possession. Ball going inside to Colson. That's really planned. Mike Bray's kids understand how to play. They're well coached. Mike's done a terrific job on the sideline at Notre Dame. They love him down there at the Golden Dome. Beach him out. Vastoria, who now has three fouls, he goes out. The new ball. Matthias had it knocked away off of Fluger. Nova Haas now in the post. Swanigan sitting out with the three. He may not be quite as polished offensively as Caleb Swanigan, but he can still score down low. Yeah, he really has good moves around the basket. A good footwork down there, down deep. Good touch. And they get him a touch. Trying to get him about 25 minutes, doubling him up there. They said they weren't going to double, but they doubled down in that post. And then a careless dribble by Carson Edwards. Gibbs out in the open. I like Gibbs. Gibbs going to be one heck of a player at Notre Dame. You can just see certain things that he possesses, the quickness, the handle. Came out of a real strong high school, seeking all prep. A lot of good players from season. Remember Brevin Knight from season oh, all prep? Oh, absolutely. No Brevin Knight. His father, Melvin Knight, was tremendous. You don't remember him. See, that's a high time. I used to go watch him play at season one. That's my alma mater, man. Torres comes in. Gevin out. Under 14 to play. Fresh shot clock for the Boilermakers. Now a whistle and a foul against the Irish down low. Well, can't touch him in that post. We've talked about this matchup already, Dick. Kentucky, Louisville, two top 10-ish teams. Wednesday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. All you got to say is Kentucky, Louisville, Patino, Calipari, and it's basketball. Let's play. Yeah, let's play. It would be a tremendous atmosphere in Louisville in that giant arena. It'll be rocking. Purdue went in there in that ACC Big Ten challenge. Edwards missed the jumper. And Purdue had a hard time with the pressure of Louisville, the pressure defense. Well, very athletic Louisville team. I love the way Notre Dame shares the basketball. Always looking for the open high percentage shot. Take high percentage shots. That's high percentage? Is that execution? Is that efficiency? Good timeout by Matt Panda, but that is just beautiful, efficient basketball. Moving the ball, getting a high percentage shot. If you take high percentage shots and you got quality players, you got a chance to win. Look at this right here. Watch it drop the bounce pass. Like Kellogg would say, dropping it on a dime. I mean, you've been talking about him all game. Number five, Matt Farrell, has just oh. been tremendous. He's had a great first. He's had a great game here. He's had a great first half of the season. He now he's going to be able to do that in the ACC. The ACC is going to be dynamite. Dynamite. I mean, this Notre Dame team was picked seventh in the preseason in the ACC, and it justifiably so. I mean, they may finish higher than that, but that's how deep that conference yep. is. Well, I'll tell you this. That's on paper. There's no way they're going to finish seventh. I don't think so. No way in the world. I mean, this team knows how to win. they got veteran players. they got a winner's mentality. You know, you can have veterans, but who haven't won, that's a whole different thing. Assist the turnover ratio. This club is number one in the nation. Take a look right here. Always giving the ball open shooters, and they make shots. Move the ball, find the open guy, great spacing. We talk about spacing so vital. That's pretty high percentage right yeah. there. And like you said, drops that bounce pass, great angle on the cut. Love it. You gotta love it. You're a basketball guy, you gotta love that kind of play. It's so fun to watch. And you said it, everybody shares the ball, everybody, Pat, but it starts with Farrell on this team. Edwards working against Colson. Nice little turnaround. He's doing everything he can, Edwards, to keep them in the basketball game. He's got 16, 6 of 8 shooting. He's multi-skilled. I like his skills. He can step and shoot the three, he can put the ball on the floor. The guy who's lost his starting job, but playing like he wants it back here this afternoon. Well, he's going to get it back playing like this. Fluger thought about the three. Never turns the ball over. Has not turned it over yet this year. Not one time. Almost 200 minutes. Missed the three. Loose ball. Gibbs tracks it down. Then kind of got caught in the air. Swanigan back in the game. Jump ball. And here goes this ridiculous alternate possession rule. <laughs> you make a great play, but the ball's going back here. Unbelievable. 
He's right here. Look at him fight for the basketball. Here he is. Make a big play, but wrestles it away from him. Over possession goes to the Fighting Irish. Now Torres, who's that? That's his role. Just kind of be a hustle player, a hard worker. Farrell, nifty ball handling, then badly missed the shot. Yeah, that was Brick City, USA. <laughs> he deserves one after the way he's played. Klein passed up the three. Thompson shoots the three. Good. He's normally not a three-point shooter. He's a guy that's a distributor, but Thompson nails the big three. And they're right back again. Down only three to Boilers. Well, they couldn't make those shots in the first half. They're going down. Two years ago, the Irish beat him in this battle here, the crossroads rival. Purdue, this is the sixth year they've played this event. It's a cool event. They've never oh. won a game. Backdoor play, but a foul interrupted it. Foul made a nice cut. Almost had to bounce pass for a layup. We got a good one, Dave. It's a good one, baby. Makes this event here in Indianapolis fun. The proximity of the schools. No state cares about college hoops more than Indiana. Notre Dame, Purdue, separated by less than 100 miles. Unbelievable. Let me just tell you this. I used to say, Dicker, how come you don't play Purdue? He said, Dickie V, there are no roads that can go from South Bend to West <laughs> Lafayette. <laughs> Dicker, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, so we drew that straight line. It's not quite that straight if you're trying to actually make it between the two. Mentioned earlier, Digger in 78 had him in the final four. Arkansas is there with Eddie Sutton and the triplets, Moncrief Brewer and Marvin Duff. Pretty good, huh? Wow. Good memory, I remember that. Great memory, great names. Joe Hall stood tall at 78, won the NCAA title with the Kentucky Wildcats. Purdue, by the way, has not led, not ever, in this game. They're down three. They were down 14 at halftime. Cut it to two, but every time they seem to cut it, the Irish come back with some good execution. Beecham, who's been a little careless with the ball, had a shot blocked by Edwards. He made a bad play right there. Had no shot whatsoever. No angle to make that shot. He's a veteran player and knows better than that. Swanigan going to work down low. Good. He's solid in that post. He is understands, he's much more efficient in the post. They're back, man. The Boilers are back. He's feeling it. You can tell he's bouncing around out there. This would be a tough, tough loss for the Irish. They played so brilliantly in that first half. And it's been a week where they had two big final exams, Villanova and Purdue. You want to at least win one of those two. Bad pass. Boilermakers have a chance for their first lead. Klein, there it is. Oh, oh, Klein, baby, he can shoot the trifecta. We haven't seen it. The Boilermakers take their first lead of the day, Mr. Fleming. Amazing. And still a long way to go. Another Notre Dame timeout. Mike Ray's only got one left. And this building has just come to life. He wasn't showing that shirt in the first half. It was he hidden. was hiding, man. He was hiding. But he proudly puts it out now. Little boiler ball. This is boiler ball. Yes, sir, Mr. Klein. His daddy played at Ohio State. Buckeyes. He was a captain of the yeah. Buckeyes. Isaac Haas loving it wow. from the bench. Uh, talking about how much this state loves college hoops. They got a lot to love this year. What a year for Indiana college basketball. Take a look right there. We're not even mentioning the teams. What about a team? Fort Wayne. Yeah. They said, why aren't we on there? We beat the Hoosiers. <laughs> we beat the Hoosiers. What about Indiana State? Yes, the Sycamores. They said, we beat Butler. You think about Valpo. This state has quality basketball. They love their basketball. Great passion. Great feeling. He'll be, he looks so sad right there, the Indiana guy. He sees the same barber I do, too. <laughs> Saving his energy. I hope he gives a tip like I do. Indiana Butler will follow this game. Colson missed the shot, got his own miss. Kind of flings one up there and goes in. I'll tell you one thing. Talk about tenacious. Talk about competitive. Colson made that play happen. What a big play by Bonsi Colson. 19 for him. Game is tied at 67. Down low, oh, nice Swanigan cut. with the foul. Great cut without the ball by Swanigan. Nice look inside. Edwards did a great job finding him. That was Thompson that found him, right? Yeah. Thompson. 
Third foul on Cole. This is part of what you're talking about, how he's gotten in so much better shape. Caleb Swanigan, and he moves without the ball. So much more active. And he makes his free throws. See, I think he's more active when he's out there by himself. You and I talked about it earlier. When he and Haas are together, they take up space on the inside, and he can't operate and be as efficient as he is when he has that open space in that three-second area. I'm with you. I mean, the idea of both of them playing at the same time sounds good. I think they're better when it's one at a time. And they I have make been you in this coach. game. I'm going to make you coach Fleming now. I keep it simple. <laughs> Gibbs, a little up and under. I told you, he's going to be a one heck of a player. He is going to be a star player with the Golden Domers. Just a freshman. He's got seven. Plays hard defensively, too. Good foot movement. They are really feeding Caleb Swan again. Edwards, offensive rebound, puts it in. What a game he's having. Kid went to the bench, didn't pout, didn't sulk, lost his starting job. He said, I'll show the coach I should play. And what he's done has been brilliant here in this game. A junior from Middletown, Ohio. He is a difference maker for Purdue. Middletown, Ohio, produced one of the greatest players in the history of college basketball, Jerry Lucas. That is a travel. You weren't around to see Jerry. He was unbelievable. Tremendous player. John Havlicek, and he, they had a guy come off the bench by the name of Robert Montgomery Knight. Oh, look at this right here. Well, Swanigan with the three fouls was willing to hold his ground. All the way, Edwards. Swanigan tried to follow. There was a foul, though, I think, on the initial shot. See, I, I think. think the one thing that's happening right now, Purdue is much more aggressive offensively. You see them in an attack mode. They're attacking. They're aggressive. Just been a totally different team since halftime. Well, Matt Payne must have got into him a little bit at halftime because he got him out here. They play with a lot more fire. Well, you're you're going to play fire if you got any pride when you're down big like they were at halftime. What were they down? 14, Dave? 14. 14-point 14 lead for Notre Dame. Purdue's up four with eight and a half to go. It's happened fast. Carson Edwards. Mike Bray's a little stunt standing on that sideline. Can't believe what he's seeing here right now. I mean, he's used his timeouts. He's adjusted the lineup. He's tried different combinations. He said at halftime, this baby was far from over. We were right on. They were just missing shots. Purdue shot so poorly in that first half, and he did, didn't defend. Farrell, three. Good. And he's made some big plays. His stock is going up, man. He's getting some swag to his game. Up, up, up. 17 for Farrell. Two really quality basketball teams that you know are going to be part of March Madness. No doubt about it. Matthias. Swanigan down low. Avoided the turnover. Nice little pass. I just had a three-second call on him. Edwards. Swanigan kept it alive. Purdue still has it. Matthias, three. Too strong. Boy, they are battling inside. Are they battling on the inside? I got to give credit to Swanigan. He has been ferocious on the interior. And the effort has led Purdue to a two-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Zay. Celebrate your lasting love with gifts from Zay, the Diamond State. What's better, Coach Vital? He'd even make me look like a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Steve Alford's happy he's got Lonzo Ball, an amazing player. I'll tell you one thing, the Buckeyes really need that signature win. They had a bad loss this year, Florida Atlantic, and that would be, you talk about signature win, if they can beat right now UCLA. You know, the, the night, I think it was the night you were in Bloomington for Carolina, Indiana. I was in Charlottesville for Ohio State, Virginia. They had such a great chance to beat the Cavaliers and came up a little bit short. There's a foul against the Irish. You know, Virginia, a lot like Notre Dame, they find a way to win. Yep. They really do. Notre Dame and Mike Bray's been able to do that the last few years. Has had two terrific years. Two years ago, winning the ACC tournament was unbelievable. I mean, you got to beat Carolina and Duke within 48 hours. It's pretty tough. Man. That's hard to do. Especially in the state of Carolina. Down low. Not a great pass from Klein. Fine telegraph that baby. I mean, that was a telegraph special. They've definitely protected the ball better in the second half, Purdue has. Well, they've done a better job moving the ball, too. Colson missed the shot. What a rebound by Swanigan. 
Swannigan's been a force here. He's not allowed those fouls to really bother his game. I right, good point. He, you got to give him credit. He has played with foul trouble, and the big man misses the three. Edwards, way up high, draws a foul. I can't emphasize how good he has been. He's been terrific from Middletown. You know this is from Middletown, Ohio? Our extraordinary director, Scott Johnson, Butch Carter, who played in Indiana, Kyle Schwarber, who went to Indiana, and now famous player with the Chicago Cubs. Uh, the and I Cubbies. know you know your baseball. Because you're doing Giants games, baby. <laughs> Cubs took down my Giants in the playoffs on their way to that World Series win. One of my favorite baseball players right now in baseball has a heart of gold. He and his wife, Kristen, I can't say enough about a guy you cover, Buster Posey. Yep. Terrific. Mutual friend of ours, just a good guy, doing a lot of stuff to help you fight pediatric cancer. He and I had a great event out here in San Fernando, raised 600000 one night for kids. Love Buster. Now, let's get a good one right here, baby. Let's stay with this one now. Purdue up four. Under seven minutes to go. Purdue was down 14 at the half. And everything's been better for the Boilermakers. Farrell along the baseline. Colson. Good defense, fighting for the loose ball. Purdue's got it, and Colson commits the foul. Yeah, he does commit the foul. Climbs over the back. Now that's his fourth, so that's a big call. Following the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl on ESPN tonight. Stick around Sports Center at night. Butchergrass and Briscoe, Nicole and John. All the highlights, bowl games, NFL stuff, college hoops. Sports Center at night after college football on ESPN. Dynamite duo. Yeah. Where would it be without Sports Center, man? Look at all my scores. Man, there'll be a lot of college hoop stuff to mix in with all the other things that are going on. Well, remember now, we're talking about coming down the last six minutes of the game. Free throw line could be big. Notre Dame leads the nation in free throw shooting. Purdue, a decent free throw yep. shooting team. Klein makes the first. But better than decent today. They have not missed a free throw all afternoon. 14 of 14. Well, I think what they've done a good job at Purdue is keeping the Irish really off that line for big numbers. Yeah, you know they're going to make them, so trying to prevent them from taking them. And that is a silly foul. That'd be ran right into him. There's no doubt about that foul. So the freshman Carson Edwards commits the personal. Just the fourth team foul. And he, we talked about Swanigan playing with the foul trouble. Colson has stayed in the game. He's got four. He's got to keep him in. They're minus six, six minutes to go. Can't take a chance taking him out. They're limited in their personnel on that baseline. They are not a real deep team. They're a talented team. Team that really does a great job finding open guys for the three. Thompson was right on top of Astoria, who gets it to Colson for the lay-in. Look at that execution. Right down the gut of the defense. The three wasn't available. Defense extended out, opened up a gap for him. The leprechaun is going wild on the sideline. My daughters are a nervous wreck at home. They're both double domers. My two son-in-laws are Notre Dame guys. We're athletes. We got seven degrees in my family from Notre Dame. That's a, that's a lot of cash to South Bend. Swanigan with the left hand. And Swanigan really has a way of keeping the Irish fans a little sad. 24 for the big man for Purdue. Now Colson against Swanigan. Tried that spin move. Missed the shot. Too much of a line drive right there. Uncle Mo is really on the side, big time, of the Boilers. Astoria went for the steal. They left Vincent Edwards open. And that tip by Colson, Beecham grabbed the rebound. They got to find some shots for Beecham. He started off this game on fire. Hasn't had many shots lately. You're right, he's been real quiet. Astoria to the bucket, rejected. Farrell, though, found the loose ball with the foul. What a play by Farrell. What a play. I mean, if they win, he's got to be the MVP. He's got to be the MVP. On the other side, my MVP would be Edwards. Would be Edwards. Oh, blocks the shot. Farrell stays on top of the ball. Look at that. What a shot. Tough, man. Tough New York City kid. 19 for Farrell with a chance for one more with the three-point possibility. How big was that play right there? I mean, they really are on the ropes, Notre Dame, big time. Keeps them alive. I mean, that keeps that free throw streak. You talk about Notre Dame as a team, that's 31 free throws in a row made by Matt Farrell. It's pretty good, man. You don't miss a free throw. You got a buddy Fluger who hasn't had a turnover. And yet they're down. 
gutty performance by Purdue. They could have folded after that first half. Showed a lot of character, a lot of toughness. The freshman Edwards missed the shot, but a whistle. Foul. Yeah, they called the foul. I think against Austin Torres. Colson was in the neighborhood, but it won't be his fifth. No, Torres came across that baseline and really smacked them. His third personal. Isn't it interesting, too, that Purdue has done this basically with Isaac Haas on the bench? He's played yeah. two minutes in the second half. Well, they've gone with a smaller lineup. They've decided to go with a smaller, quicker lineup. He's a good player. Make no doubt about it. He's going to be a factor all year for them in the Big Ten. In this matchup, though, Purdue has found a lot more success with just leaving Swanigan out there all alone as the big man. Giving him a lot of room inside to operate against Notre Dame. It's been a good adjustment by Matt Painter. Free throw was missed, though, by Carson Edwards. Well, he's shaking his arm. Now, he may be having a problem shooting here. Looks like he's a little pain there. Keeps shaking that right arm. Tough kid. Not a tall player in stature, but he is physically ready for the college game. He missed them both. He jabbed that shot. He jabbed it. He's grabbing his arm. He's grabbing his elbow. Yep. I think he might think of taking him out. He's shaking it right hand. A lot of motion. One of them gets a lot of motion on the offensive end. Toughest guys to play are guys that have got move, movement and motion. Astoria blocked by Swanigan with the help defense. Terrific help by Swanigan. Great timing on that block shot. It's the second one blocked by Pastoria. Swanigan wants the ball, man. He does. You got to get it to him. Thompson three. That one off the mark. Rebound. Who's going to get it? Swanigan dives, saves it in to Notre Dame. A lot of hustle right there. Scrap it. Nice little pass fake, but the three comes up way short. Line drive it. And that story has had a quiet offensive game. And Beach was in quiet here in the second half. That story just one of eight shooting the ball. So those are two of their big offensive weapons. Wow, well, those three veterans, Colson, Beecham, and Vestoria, really are the catalyst for the Irish. Swan again picked up his dribble. Shot clock is winding down. Edwards, does he realize it? I don't know that he does, but he gets it off. Misses the shot. Great look. He got Colson, it off He did. Colson draws a foul. Coming down the stretch. And, Dick, we got a good one. We got a real... Dandy here, two top 20 teams, baby. Fourth foul against Swanigan, so that's big. Three-point lead for Purdue. In City, Kansas, back to Dick and Dave. All right, Andy, thanks. Coming down the home stretch here. Final three minutes in Indianapolis. Three-point lead for Purdue, but Notre Dame ball. Down a winning time right now, so execution is really supreme here. you got to make sure the right people are shooting. Foul's eyes are always great vision, but he turned it over. Such a rarity. Remember, we told you they lead the nation in the least number of turnovers, the Irish. Almost never happens, particularly with Farrell. That's their ninth turnover of the game. Swanigan's got to be their king. They got to execute off Swanigan here somehow. Edwards, that's a he travel. Walked. Yeah, sorry, he lifted his pivot foot. Swanigan's got to get some touches on the other end. You're coming down to the last two and a half minutes. A little bit of a drought for the Boilermakers. They have not beaten Notre Dame in a long time, and they've never won a game in this event, which has been going on for six years now. They call it the Crossroads Classic here in Indiana. Tell you one thing, that Farrell's got that New York City toughness, but he played at Bridgewater. He's from Bridgewater, played at Point Pleasant. Beach High School upset another turnover. How rare is that? Two consecutive possessions, turnovers by the Irish? Yeah, that will drive Mike... Bray, nuts Wednesday, Kentucky, Louisville, 7 Eastern. Don't miss it. We're also going to start college game day, 6.30 Eastern on ESPN. It'll stream live on the ESPN app. That'll be a great, great game. There's no doubt about it. I'll be at North Carolina Wednesday with Obi, Dave O'Brien. We'll be seeing the Par Heels taking on a team that shocked them last year, Northern Iowa. Yeah. Ben Jacobson in that program. Always Here we go. Program. Swanigan's got to get the ball, man. They got to get the rock to this kid down in deep. Got to get him the ball in deep. He's there it open. is. There it is. He oh, missed I... it. Yeah, the ball got stuck in the palm of his hand. He didn't get good touch on that. So Notre Dame dodged one there. Fluger fought about the three. Over the top oh, to Colson. Oh, what a Colson. nice entry. 
What a nice entry. I'll tell you, Dave, that was a perfect entry on the angle. Farrell with the great look inside, Colson with the deuce. We got ourselves a quality finish here. Minute and a half to go. Notre Dame down one on defense. Purdue. Swan Wide again. open. Wide open. Lack of communication. Nobody talked. That's one of the keys to a good defense. Communicate with each other. He slips the little screen, goes to the goal, and the big star, Swanigan, gets an open deuce. Colson wants to take him one-on-one. -on -one. He wants to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, nice fake. Nice fake. Oh, he didn't get the deuce. Missed the shot. Loose ball. And are they calling a foul? I think they are. He should have used the backboard, Colson. He had the angle for the back. And if that's backboard. Vastoria, that's number five. It is. That's his fifth foul. This would be a tough, tough loss for the Irish. They played so well, so well in that first half. Plus 14. Oh, look at the end. Watch, he flips it up beautifully to catch. And there's the finish, laying on the glass. And then Swanigan slips the screen right here on Colson. Watch this. He, slips, he steps out. No rotation. Wide open. Lack of communication. Lack of rotation. Getting down to free throw shooting now, baby. And double bonus, which is big. So it's two shots for Ryan Klein, the sophomore from Carmel, right here outside of Indianapolis. Makes the first. He's got good touch. Oh, Yuri shot the three exceptionally well. He just, has, in his career, Dick, made two two-point baskets. He's a three-point shooter. That's it. And he's good at nice it. Nice stroke. They and went the small both. ball. Didn't play Haas. Went the small ball in the second half. And it has worked so well. What a matchup between Swanigan and Cole. Yep. They both had excellent games. Both have four fouls. Both really challenging each other, competing down in that low box. A must possession right here for the Irish. It's a must possession. Farrell. Oh, How did he flip that one in? He's been a star all day. Farrell. Talk about a kid that earned his playing time in starting position. Mike Bray does not want a foul. You got plenty of differential between shot clock and game clock. But if Purdue scores, Notre Dame's in big trouble. Edwards double teamed. Edwards, did he travel again? Yes. He looked at the pivot foot. Two violations by Edwards. Did the Irish get a chance? And he's played so well, but two costly turnovers down the stretch. So do you go for three here with 31 seconds? No, you go for the deuce if it's available. If it's available, if it's available, the three-point shot with the kind of shooters they have, you take it. But I wouldn't specifically say hunting the three, but he is. Ryan three, oh, way God. short. That was way, way out of range. And a foul by Notre Dame. That was not a good look right there. No. That was not a good look. I was shot that from Bloomington. And Ryan, who is a good shooter, but cold off the bench. He just came in when Vistoria fouled out. Oh, he's like those pinch hitters that come in. It's so difficult. And he didn't have really that open look that you would like out of a three in that situation. So you take the quick two. 19 seconds still on the clock. Matthias for big free throws, and he missed one, so that helps the Irish. Keeps the Irish alive. He converts here. We've got a two-possession game. They'll bring the freshman Gibbs in for Ryan. He gets a little more quickness on the floor. Ryan, good shooter. Shot down a little too quick. Big free throw here. Perfect. Yep. That puts some pressure defensively. You don't want to foul. I think the Irish work a little. You got to go fast. Colson challenged and oh, blocked. Oh, What a defensive play. But the tip out to Farrell. He missed the three. Loose ball. Gibbs and Thompson together. The arrow favors Purdue with 5.9 seconds. It looks like to be a lot of celebration going on down at West Lafayette. It looks like they really are going to celebrate. They had a miserable first half, but Matt Painter got his kids ready this second half, and they responded. Oh, did they respond. Tough week for the Irish. Two quality games, and they came up short. Battle to battle Villanova. Battle to battle Purdue but came up short. 
Chances for great non-conference wins for the Irish. Now a quick foul on Thompson. I guess you could say the baby's not over yet, but I'm thinking put it in the book. I think you put it in a book, Mr. Fleming. Well, I think so, too. And for Purdue, 14-point deficit at halftime. And it was interesting because they made some real changes. Haas to the bank. He played two second-half minutes. They went with that one big lineup, and it really worked. Well, when they won the game, really, was the first three, four minutes after halftime. They came out with purpose. They came out and played with emotion, intensity, and they sucked it up a little defensively because they really were non-existent defensively. Notre Dame executed and got anything they wanted in the first half. 52 points for Notre Dame in the first half. Finally beat the Irish. They've lost to the Irish, what, the last three times? I haven't beaten them since the 60s. Second free throw, good. Final seconds here in Indianapolis. No one a foul. Almost banked it in. The horn sounds. What a win for the Boilermakers. Great win for Purdue and a tough, tough loss for the Irish. They fought, they battled, had a quality first half, but Purdue the second half was the better basketball team. They went to small ball, Swanigan and Edwards played really well, and the new kids could celebrate. Well, just like last weekend, Notre Dame had the lead. They couldn't hold it. A good team, Purdue, comes from behind and beats the Irish 86-81. For Dick Vitale, Dave Fleming saying so long here from Indianapolis. Let's go back to the studio.